Good evening everyone, it is David Schlotthauer here with an update on your weather forecast. As far as severe weather goes for the Deep South next week, we could be dealing with strong tornadoes, damaging winds, and some large hail, especially over the Arklatex area as well as the Mislatex. If you're new to the YouTube channel and you really like these videos, please consider subscribing, hitting the like button, and sharing this video with your family and friends on social media. So we're going to make this rather a quick video so it's not too long, it's not too boring and way too detailed. Also, that way I can get this out early enough for you all to view. So this will look at the European model for Monday, January the 2nd, and we can see where our system is going to be. It's going to be over the Rockies. We're talking moderate to heavy snowfall, strong winds, cooler temperatures, but it's not always the same way if you go further south. Here, we're going to find the threat for severe weather, and it could be a big day for severe weather, especially for Monday into Tuesday, where we could be dealing with a lot of problems. So this is Monday morning. We can see a couple of showers moving to the north here as that warm um, air advection uh, instability. It's going to be an unstable area to watch for thunderstorms. And when we get into that, we can clearly see with what we are dealing with here. We're looking at um, widely scattered showers, strong winds. And again, these could be producing some tornadoes and some of them could be strong and long tracked. Not only that, we are dealing with large hail and again, gusty winds. But to the north, it's going to be snowing. It, there's going to be some ice storms going on potentially over Nebraska, northern Iowa. There's a little bit of a difference between each model, depending on what model you actually look at. Since we only have time, we're only going to focus in on the European model for the most of the video. But we can see where that surface flow actually goes. It goes into the southeast. It goes into the rest of the Ohio Valley, where it's going to bring quite a bit of impacts. We're looking at some moderate to heavy rainfall. And again, the severe weather could extend fairly far north into central Indiana, maybe even portions of Ohio and southern Illinois. But look at that. Big time snowfall there on the European model. And that system continues to move southeast throughout the day on Wednesday. Here's a look at the GFS model solution. Again, depending on what model you look at, we're going to have all crazy outcomes here. And the system is right now over our area. So there's a lot to um, factor in as this gets um, over the desert southwest and then into the high plains. So GFS shows that the system will develop like the European model has it. A lot of discrete mode development here over Texas, over Oklahoma, over Arkansas, over northern Louisiana. Again, tornadoes, some strong, large hail and um, damaging winds are all anticipated. As we go into Monday night into Tuesday, more of a linear storm mode could develop here all the way from the Arklatex region into, say, Missouri, into Illinois, into Indiana, as well as Ohio. So again, if you're doing anything outdoors um, after New Year's, just keep in mind, check your weather app because weather is going to be pretty active for your location on Monday and Tuesday, depending on where you live. Now, also for California, it's going to be looking pretty active too. We'll talk more about that on my Facebook page and my Facebook group. If you want to um, actually um, check that out, there's a link in the description below this video leading to my weather force or, or my Sacramento weather group uh, for more details on California's weather because we're going to have some wild, wicked weather here. Okay, so now on to our wicked weather for the southeast here on Tuesday night and a Wednesday. Looks pretty active there with showers, thunderstorms, maybe some breezy winds to contend with that. So now, what is our dynamics going into the system? Well, we start at the surface, right? So when we take a look here at our 100 meter wind speed streamlines in knots on the European model, we can see, first of all, our winds here are coming in out of the southerly direction. We can see these uh, wind streamers going north. We have a warm front that is going to be draped like this, like so. We have a cold front and a dry line, more so, yeah, it looks to be a dry line in a way that is bent back here so a pretty dynamic system is going to try to get in hand here with maybe a triple point that sets up in southeastern kansas all right so when we take a look at the winds they're very strong but nothing obeys the same rules when you get higher up right so this is at 850 millibars or 5,000 feet above the surface we can see southwesterly winds uh, 30 to 50 miles an hour that's again strong
strong deep layer shear that is going to be over the region. In fact, perhaps even 60 to 70 mile an hour winds at that level over Arkansas, over Louisiana, over eastern Texas. So the Arklatex area are going to really have some in reinforcement with some very strong low level winds. On top of that, we have southwesterly mid and upper level winds right around 18,000 feet above the surface. So we're going to have directional speed shear over the Arklatex region for our severe weather episode, even in over Mississippi, over Tennessee, and perhaps even southern um, Mississippi, where or southern Missouri, I should say, is where we're going to have the best chances because we have a lot of barrel clinic lift here right along the negatively axis trough that we have that is kind of located like this. So that's going to really help emphasize and really vigorate the atmosphere there for severe weather. On top of that, we are also continuing with a lot of instability. We're looking at uh, modest to mo moderate instability over the area. So over Texas, over the deep south there, anywhere between 500 to 1,000 joules of cape, that's enough to, again to trigger thunderstorms sufficient for a severe weather episode over the Arklatex area, as well as uh, Mississippi, Missouri, southern Illinois, as well as portions there of Oklahoma, as well as um, Tennessee. Conditional threat though over Kansas City since you have weak instability over that area for Monday afternoon. All right, on our next thing, here's a look at our moisture. So our dew points, of course, that's a measure of um, how saturated is the air. So if your uh, temperature, say, in the upper 60s, low 70s, and your dew points are in the mid 60s, the air is really saturated. Okay, warm air holds more water than colder air. So it's able to condense a little easier than cooler air. So we can see we have a warm sector that is going to be over the area here, over the Arklatex, Mislatex, including for Missouri, Southern Illinois, and even evacuating that moisture into southern Indiana. So areas like Kokomo, Indianapolis to the south might have to watch the skies closely for a pop-up storm or two. But further south here is where we have much of the moisture evaction here from the Gulf of Mexico inland where we have dew points that are going to be in the low to mid 60s for the most part some low 70s potentially on the european model especially over southern portion of louisiana and southeastern most texas where we have the more richer moisture that is going to be advecting through the warm sector regime when we take a look at our air temperature forecast we can see that boundary layer heating is anticipated due to again moisture advection so we're going to kind of get things warmed up here a little bit with temperatures that are going to be in the upper 60s to low 70s so that's a lot of moisture and a lot of warm air and that's going to contribute to the instability that i was just talking about here in this slide so instability warm air moisture and shear will be facilitating a pretty substantial severe weather event i'm not going to call it an outbreak just yet just because we're a little bit too far yet when there's if there's going to be a moderate risk then we'll have to kind of drop the bomb there on a moderate uh, or on a severe weather outbreak or kind of uh what do they call it um i forgot the word but you know um uh, kind of a severe weather trigger we call it okay so now um on the storm prediction center there is a 15 to 30 percent risk for severe weather in this area and a 30 percent there between days four and eight you know because they have one through three uh, day one through three, they go usually marginal, um, uh, general, as well as slight. Then you got the moderate, then you got the high risks, right? But when you get out to day four through eight, it's usually only two colors, 15 and 30. A 30 is a more significant threat for severe weather than a 15% is. You should know this by now. So when we take a look at this um, for northern Louisiana, central and southern um, portion there of Arkansas, eastern um, Texas, pretty good threat here for severe weather. And again, a potential severe weather um, event is looking likely here over um, the Dixie, kind of the Dixie-ish alley here over the Ozarks most likely is where we have the best chances for severe weather. Before I do in this video, I do have a couple announcements that I would wanna share with you. The first one most being is, make sure you have your weather radio ready to go, make sure it's activated, and make sure you do have your flashlights just in case if you lose power, because as soon as you lose power, so does your TV, so does 
um, other things, right? So make sure you have your phones charged, flashlights ready to go, food and water, just in case, again, the power goes out. Especially non-refrigerated food is the best option here. All right, and also, if you're storm chasing, make sure you are very careful. There are a lot of trees. There's a lot of tall vegetation down here that might obscure your view of seeing any tornadoes or any supercellular-like structure. So do not wait to hear it coming if you're a storm chaser. If you're under a tornado warning and you're storm chasing, you need to get out of harm's way. We might be doing a live stream on this on Monday, right? This Monday. Actually, I will be able to do a live stream um, since my internet connection is good. So we will be covering this severe weather event as it unfolds across the Deep South and the Midwest. Depending on the evolution, we'll keep you updated here on the YouTube channel for more information on that. And the last one thing being is potentially next week on Wednesday, we are talking about a very, very powerful storm system that is going to hit my area, potentially on, again, Wednesday, a huge atmospheric river. Some of the area forecast discussions, local weather offices here have been saying this could be a particularly uh, dangerous situation here. Um, I don't want to say PDS in any way, but a pretty dangerous storm system that has a wind gust that could reach 50 to 60, maybe 70 or 80 miles an hour. If that happens, we will also be doing a live stream on that storm system as it makes landfall here potentially on Wednesday. But that is it for today. Um, thank you all for watching. Share, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you back here in the next one.